The most important thing in the Olympic Games is not to win, but to take part. Just as the most important thing in life is not the triumph, but the struggle. The essential thing is not to have conquered, but to have fought well. So at this point, the Olympics should have already happened, but we're a year past that. Um, so these athletes have had an extra year of prep, an extra year of thinking about what's going to happen, um, a lot of different things going through your head. For me, I'm just looking forward to seeing the athletes go out and do what they've prepared to do for the last five years, right? I look at it as they had an extra year to get out there. I'm on the edge of my seat right now because I want this thing to start. American teammate, Michael Phelps. Phelps now with his second I'm somebody who lived in the Olympic space, who lived in a quad every four years, that Olympic movement um, for 24 years. So for me, uh, this is something that, that I'm nervous but excited for everybody else because you know, some of these athletes have worked their whole entire life to be able to have this one moment. It's about the preparation that you've put into it up to this point. You've made the Olympic team, right? It's just another meet. The pool is the same length. The lane lines were the same width. The pool was the same temperature. Everything was exactly the same, but it is, it, it is the Olympics. So you have that, that extra uh, level of excitement. To really be prepared for an Olympic games, you have to put into the work. You have to go through the struggle. Through the journey that I went on five times, it was never easy. But I know the work that I was doing gave me the results that I deserved at the Olympics. So I was in the last five Olympic Games. 2000, I was in Sydney, Australia. 2004 was in Athens, Greece. 2008 was in Beijing, China. 2012, London, England. 2016 was Rio de Janeiro, Brazil. I believe I was nervous in 2000. And every other one, I was excited. I was a different person at every Olympics. Right? I, was, I, I, I grew up through the process of being at the Olympic Games. So I won my first gold in Athens, the 400 IM. I think it was 408, 24, something like that. Uh, obviously Beijing, it was a perfect week. Going eight for eight, winning the races how I did. You know, some of them by a hundredth, some of them by a few hundredths. So I was on the right side of some pretty incredible races. Uh, 2012, I, I think I learned more uh, about myself through those Olympics than any other one. Um, and then being able to come back in 2016, my last Olympics, having my first son in the stands, watching my wife up there. Uh, for me, that was just something that, uh, again, I always dreamt of. You know, so for me, I think looking back at my Olympics and my career, I was able to check a lot of boxes off of things that I wanted to accomplish uh, throughout my career. If you're an Olympian or are trying to become an Olympian, it's, it's a 24 hour, seven day a week job. It's nonstop, it's around the clock. Uh, for me, it was eat, sleep, swim. That was it, nothing else. For me, I was swimming six, sometimes seven days a week, three to five hours in the pool every day, plus an hour of cardio or strength and conditioning training outside of the pool. I had to make sure I was sleeping the right amount of hours, eating the right foods. You know, I think if you have one part of it off, things aren't gonna go as well. So for me, I was nonstop sleeping, nonstop resting, nonstop massages, cold tub, eating the right things, mental preparation visualizing, anything you can imagine, I did. Because when the Olympics was here, Olympic trials were here, I wanna be ready, I wanna be prepared. Because if I'm prepared, I can be myself. I'm not stressed, I'm not worried, I'm there to be me. And I think that's the best shot where you have the chance to see the biggest results. If you show me any race, I can put myself back into the race. I could probably tell you something that happened that day or what I was thinking in the race. Yeah, I mean, th those things are, those things never leave my mind. Um, all of my races, all of my medals. Yeah, I remember them like they were yesterday. I've broke 39 world records throughout my career. 40 if you uh, consider my putt. I have a world record for a putt too in golf. The longest televised putt in history. 
Um, well, I think when I look at the Olympics as a whole, I'm somebody that's really big with numbers. Like I, I just, I'm infatuated by numbers. So like I think of 1932, 1948, and 1968. So the stopwatch, the photo finish camera, and the touchpad. When you think of that, about those three things in sports, your, your mind could go on for hours and hours about how much change they really gave us. To be able to really determine from the smallest fractions of a second who wins or loses the race. And, and you know, I think it's, it's pretty cool to really see now where they're going, where it's kind of like a GPS, you know, being able to measure the speed, the acceleration, all of these things that, that I feel makes it more exciting for the viewers. It gives you a little bit more inside of, of what's going on in the race and what kind of what we're going through and what we're trying to do when we're swimming or running or do whatever we're competing in. Oh man, that race back in, in 08 um, was one of the craziest races I've ever experienced in my life. Being able to win a race by one one hundredth of a second, the smallest margin of victory. It's just mind blowing to think about. And then, I mean, I, before all of these, these pieces of technology were invented, I'd go out on a limb and say the naked eye would not be able to tell who was the correct winner of that race. So I think it's really important when you see so many advances in technology to make everything visually as real as it can possibly be. Going back and seeing that touch when it's slowed down, I know who won the race. You know, if you look back at it and really break it down, Kavik was kind of losing momentum going into it and I hit it with that extra bit of momentum and force and I stopped the clock a hundredth before he did. I mean, it, there's so much that's going through my head now. So here I'm on the block. I know my competitors more than they probably know themselves. I know how they swim each race. So for me, looking at this race right now, I knew exactly where I needed to be the first 50. Kavik has such amazing front half speed uh, and I'm sandwiched in between two real quick ones uh, with Kavik and Crocker on the other side of me. So going into the first 50, I knew I had to be at his hip. And Bob and I had talked about if we were 24-0-0 at the first 50, we were gonna win the race. And I was 24-0-1. I came off that, that wall, had a great turn. I was building momentum really going into, I guess the last 25 of this race, because that's where I know all the other swimmers, they're gonna feel like they have a piano on their back. So their body position is going to change. Um, their hips will drag a little bit. Yeah, coming down the stretch here, the last 15 meters, um, I thought the half stroke cost me the race. As I took the half stroke, my last half stroke, I, I remember saying that could have lost the race for me. Just because I, I, I could also feel the water splashing from his stroke, from the, the lane over. So I knew it was going to come down to the touch. I knew it was going to be closer than I expected. It's crazy. I mean, you look at it in real time, it doesn't make sense. I mean, after watching, we, I, just, I just hugged Crocker after the race. And yeah, I mean, that was, that was one of the, the craziest, most intense celebrations that I've, I've really ever had in my career. Bob and I trained every single day for that exact moment. Every single turn I did, every single finish I did, was preparing for that. So if I ever have a moment like that in a big race, I'm prepared. So again, it's going back to controlling what you can control. So we replicated that finish thousands of times. So I remember Andrea Kramer, the NBC reporter, uh, after the race, she had said something like, you had just surpassed blah, 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 blah. But I, I didn't know any of that stuff. You know, like for me, through, through that week, I was so focused on absolutely everything that I had to do. There, there's, there, there's not a record book that I'm chasing. Um, I, I try to put myself in that moment and be in that moment as much as I possibly can. Gosh, first time since 2000 that I won't be competing. Uh, it's weird, it's weird just saying that. I can expect that there are gonna be some, some pretty crazy emotions you know, this is something that, that I'm still so passionate about. I'm looking forward to potentially commentate at some point. For me, any single sport. I wanna see, I wanna get into it. 
Um, I'm just looking forward to having that opportunity for the first time. I think when, when you make your first Olympic Games, it, it can become overwhelming. Um, the emotions, what you're going to see, everything about going to an Olympics can be overwhelming. But once you make a team, you deserve to be there, right? You've done the hard work. You've done the preparation. At that point, it's just, it, it's just time to go out and be yourself, right? Have fun, relax. If you are your authentic self, um, you're giving yourself the best chance to go out there and have the best success. So today I have the Seamaster Diver 300 meter Tokyo 2020 edition watch. Um, for me, it's such a great timepiece. It's just such a gorgeous watch. Uh, but also when you look at the back of it, it has the Tokyo 2020 symbol on it. So I'm a watch junkie. I love them. I can't get enough of them. And especially a piece like this, um, this is a very special one to me. Because when you think of the Olympic rings, each one for all the continents across the world, it's everybody coming together, the unity of it all. I think that is the greatest thing. I'm excited this year. I'm excited to see what the athletes are going to bring. I want to say good luck to all you guys in Tokyo. Good luck to everybody who is competing in Tokyo 2020. May you have the best time. May you have the best results. I will be watching. I will be cheering. I can't wait to see everything that is going to take place this summer 2021 in Tokyo.